Year 13, Moments, Lesson 1. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is what a moment is. Now, a moment is described as the turning effect of a force. Now, let's see if we can think about what that actually means. We have a picture of a seesaw here, and it's pivoted like this in the center. Another word that you will come across, which means the same as pivot, is fulcrum. So watch out for that. And we have two children at either end of the seesaw. Now, each child has a weight, which is a force, but in the context of a seesaw, the force of each child, its weight, creates what we call a turning effect. And you know this because you've seen seesaws moving like this. So it's not just a vertical motion, it's a rotational motion. And why does that happen? It happens because the seesaw is balanced on a pivot. Now, previously, when we have looked at situations in mechanics, we have used the particle model to simplify situations. Now, when we're looking at problems involving moments, for instance, which involve things like seesaws, the particle model becomes inadequate. And that's because in the particle model, we assume that all forces act at a single point. But that's not true of the seesaw. Think back to the picture previously of the two children sitting at either end of the seesaw. We can't model that as both children sitting in the same place, i.e. all the force acting at one point. It simply doesn't work. So we have to introduce a new kind of model, and that's called the rigid body model. Now, if we're using the rigid body model, within this model, an object or a body is recognised as having a size and a shape, but we make the assumption that it is not deformed when forces act on it, so it doesn't squash or compress or stretch. Now, let's visualise an example. Look at the first diagram. You're going to imagine that's a book on top of a table and somebody is pushing on that book from one side. Now, the force applied by the person pushing acts parallel to one side of the book and will act through the centre of mass of the book. So in this example, it's perfectly fine to use the particle model because of the direction of the force and the fact that it acts through the centre of mass. So we could model this book as a particle, in which case there's a pushing force, we'll call it F, acting in this direction which causes the book to move forward in the direction of F along the table. Now, let's look at a second scenario. Again, we have a book on a table. Here's the centre of mass, I'll mark it with a cross on the table. But this time, we have two places in which the book is being pushed. There's a pushing force here, we'll call it F, and there's a pushing force here, we'll also call it F, and the forces are equal and being applied symmetrically. So we could perhaps simplify the diagram so it looks like this. Now, in this example, because the two forces are in the same direction of the same magnitude and are being applied symmetrically, the particle model is still adequate. So the book will move forward along the table in this direction under the action of a resultant force of 2F. So again, the particle model is adequate here. Now, let's have a look at a third scenario. As you can see, there are two forces pushing on the book, and they're pushing in opposite directions. Now, a number of different things could be happening here. Let's imagine that the pushing forces have the same magnitude, but are in opposite directions. So F and F. Now, in theory, the book is in equilibrium because the forces acting on it are balanced, equal and opposite, resultant force zero. However, imagine doing this yourself or take a book, place it on a table and try doing this with your hands. What you will notice is that the book will start to rotate. And that's because each of these forces has what we call a moment or a turning effect. And that means because the two forces are acting 
in relation to the centre of mass from very different positions, they will create a turning effect and a rotation rather than what happens in the previous two scenarios where the book is simply pushed along the table. Now, this happens because of the placement of the forces. There are other situations which would also result in a turning effect, for example, if the forces were of different magnitudes or if the forces were not symmetrically placed. Try it yourself, see what happens. You will likely see a rotation of this sort. Now, how fast the rotation occurs depends on the magnitude of the forces and will also be affected by the size and shape of the book or the object on which the forces are acting. Now, in this third scenario, we cannot simplify this down to a single particle because of the position of the forces in relation to the centre of mass. And that is why, in the third example, we have to use the rigid body model. So how do we calculate the size of a moment? So we've identified that the moment is a turning effect produced by a force. So let's look at a very simple model. We have a seesaw or seesaw type situation. The black triangle in the centre represents the pivot or fulcrum. And there are two objects at either side. Now, the object on the left-hand side will have a weight, which acts downwards like that, and the object on the right-hand side will have a weight, which acts downwards like that. I'll call this object P and this one Q. Now, think about directions. P is going to try and push downwards on that seesaw, and that's going to result in a movement like this, a turning effect like this or what we call an anti-clockwise moment. Now, Q is going to push down on the seesaw from its side, and think about it in relation to the pivot. Q is pushing downwards like that, which is going to result in a moment that is clockwise. Now, if you're in any doubt, imagine putting your finger on the pivot and holding that in place, and then imagine pulling down on the force as though it were a string or a rope, pulling on the direction of the arrow, and then imagine the direction in which the seesaw would start to rotate if it were fixed at the pivot. And that's a good way of identifying whether you're dealing with a clockwise or anti-clockwise moment. Now, before we learn how to calculate moments, we're going to have a think about what will affect the size of a moment. So have a look at the first pair of diagrams. Now, each object is going to have, in the first scenario, a weight of 10 newtons. But what you will notice in the diagram on the left, the object is placed further away from the pivot than in the diagram on the right hand side. Let's imagine this is 20 meters. Obviously none of this is to scale. And let's imagine that this is five meters. In which situation would you get a greater turning effect? Think, imagine you are on a seesaw. Would you get greater rotation if you were closer to the pivot or if you were further away from the pivot? Think about when somebody is trying to use a lever. Do they get more of a rotation? Do they get more of a turning effect if the lever is shorter or if the lever is longer? Well, in both cases, the answer is if it's longer. The further away you are from the pivot, the greater the size of the moment. So one of the factors that affects the size of the moment of a force is how far that force is acting away from the pivot. Now let's have a look at the second diagram. Now in this case, both objects are exactly the same distance away from the pivot. Let's say both objects are five meters away from the pivot, like this. Now the object on the left is going to have a weight of 50 newtons. And I'm going to say that the object on the right has a weight of 10 newtons. So it has a lower weight. Think, in which situation would you get a greater turning effect? Where would you get a greater degree of rotation if you have a heavier object or a lighter object? And again, it is this situation here. So the size of the force, the magnitude of the force, will affect the size of a moment. The greater the force, the greater the moment.
So it is these two factors that allow us to calculate the size of a moment. And a moment is calculated by taking the product of these two factors. So a moment is equal to the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance of that force from a pivot. Now, it's crucial that you memorise this result here. Moment of a force equals force multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot. Now, what does that perpendicular distance actually mean? Well, have a look at the diagrams here. Have a look at this situation. Can you see that the force is acting vertically? So if we measure the distance of that force or the action of the line of action of that force from the pivot, we would measure it in a horizontal distance or in a perpendicular distance to the direction of the force. Now, what would the moment of this particular 10 Newton force equal? Well, it would equal the magnitude of the force, which is 10 newtons, multiplied by the distance from the pivot, or the perpendicular distance from the pivot, like this, which is 5 metres, which gives us a value of 50 newton metres. So the unit of a moment is the newton metre. Now, let's have a look at a situation in a little bit more detail. So we have a seesaw which is balanced on some kind of pivot here. And we've got two forces. Let's take a look at the 12 Newton force first of all. Now, the magnitude of the force is equal to 12. It is a distance of 0.8 metres from the pivot. So 12 multiplied by 0.8 gives us a moment of 9.6 Newton metres. Now, whenever we are calculating a moment, we calculate it about a pivot. So if I were to call this pivot, let's say, point A, for instance, I would say that we had calculated a moment about A, or we had taken moments about A. Now, there is sometimes a mathematical shorthand for that. We sometimes say M brackets A, which means moments about A. Now, what about the 30 Newton force? So we're going to take moments about point A again. The force is of magnitude 30. The distance perpendicular to the pivot is 1.6. So 30 multiplied by 1.6 gives us a moment of 48 Newton metres. Now, direction as well. Let's think about that. So look at the 30 Newton force. Imagine pinning down the pivot so it's fixed and pulling on the string, if you like, represented by the, the 30 Newton force's arrow. What direction would the whole system start to move in if you pull down on this force here? Well, it would start to move down like that and then around. And of course, that tells you that the 30 Newton force has a clockwise moment. What about the 12 Newton force? Again, imagine pulling down on it like that. This time the movement would be down like that and then round like that and it's anti-clockwise. So this has an anti-clockwise moment. Now what would happen to this system? You can see that the moments are not balanced. There are 48 Newton meters in a clockwise direction and 9.6 newton meters in an anti-clockwise direction. So we can say that overall, if we find the difference between those, there is a moment of 38.4 newton meters, which is overall in a clockwise direction. So that means the system would start to rotate, first of all, in a clockwise direction. Now, people sometimes describe an anti-clockwise moment as a positive moment and a clockwise moment as a negative moment by convention. You'll find we don't actually make that much use of the positive or negative symbol here when we're solving problems involving moments. So let's have a look at a different scenario. Now, remember, whenever you're calculating moments, you must take them about a particular pivot point and you must state what that pivot point is. So in this example, we are going to take moments about point A. Later on, you will see what happens when we take moments about different points. So let's start with the 100 Newton force. If we take moments about A, then the force is 100 Newtons multiplied by 
the distance perpendicular to the pivot, which is 0 0.3, which gives us a moment of 30 newton metres. What about the 120 newton force? Again, taking moments about A, that's 120 newtons multiplied by 0 0.25, which gives us 30 newton metres. Now, this is interesting. They both have the same size. What about direction? Again, imagine pulling down on this force here. Imagine it were a piece of string and you were pulling down on it. You would create an anti-clockwise rotation. So this moment is anti-clockwise. What about this one? Pull down on it, imagine the rotation, it would start to turn clockwise. So that is a clockwise moment. And in this particular example, the moments are equal to each other. So the anti-clockwise moments are balanced by the clockwise moments, which means that in this particular example, the seesaw would be balanced. Now, a bigger question is whether the seesaw remains in equilibrium as well. And that is something we will discuss in a later lesson. When we're dealing with rigid bodies, there is more to think about when we're looking at equilibrium situations. And it's not quite as simple as problems involving the particle model. Let's have a look at another example. So we have some sort of rigid body which could potentially be pivoted at three distinct points, A, B and C, which are at different positions on the rod. There are three forces acting, 12 newtons, 6 newtons and 10 newtons, which are acting at positions A, B and C respectively. So they're acting at the three different pivot points. Now, the situation changes depending on where the pivot actually is. So we are going to look at the three different case scenarios, starting with scenario A. So let's fill this in in the first row of the table. I'm going to pivot the situation, pivot the rod at point A. What would be the moment produced by each force? Well, let's start with the 12 Newton force. Remember, moment equals force multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot. Well, that 12 Newton force is zero distance away from the pivot, which gives an answer of zero. So the moment produced by the 12 Newton force is zero. And that's a wider result that we need to be aware of. If a force is acting at the pivot and has zero perpendicular distance from the pivot, so like in this very simple scenario here, it will have a zero moment. Now, this will be very useful when we look at solving equilibrium problems later on. Now, what about the 6 Newton force? Well, that's 5 metres away from A, so the moment about A is simply 6 multiplied by 5, or 30 Newton metres. Now, what direction is that moment in? Well, imagine you put your finger on A, pinning it down in place, and then you pull along a string like this, pull in the direction of this arrow, and you can see you'd get this direction. So it's an anti-clockwise moment. Now what about the 10 Newton force? Remember the pivot is at A, so it's a force of 10 multiplied by a distance of 13, so it's a, a moment, it has a moment of 130 Newton meters. What about the direction? Well imagine pulling down on that and you would get a clockwise movement or a clockwise rotation. So that particular force has a clockwise moment about A. You're now going to have a go at what would happen if we pivoted at B and what would happen if we pivoted at C. Pause the video, have a go at filling in the table and then check your answers. So let's have a look at the answers. Remember we're pivoting at point B. So the 12 Newton force has a moment of 60 Newton meters in an anti-clockwise direction about point B. The 10 Newton force has a moment of 80 Newton meters about B. 
and that's in a clockwise direction. And the 6 Newton force has a moment of zero because it is acting at B, the zero perpendicular distance. Now, let's pivot at C. This time, the 12 Newton force has a moment of 156 Newton meters, and it has an anti-clockwise direction. The 6 Newton force has a moment of 48 Newton meters, and a clockwise direction about C, and the 10 Newton force, of course, has a zero moment about C. Now, in all three scenarios, moments are not balanced, i.e. anti-clockwise moments do not equal clockwise moments, so there would always be some kind of overall turning effect. So, for example, in scenario A, where the pivot is at A, there is overall 100 Newton metres clockwise, so that's the overall turning effect. In scenario B, we've got overall 20 Newton metres in a clockwise direction, and in scenario C, we have 108 Newton metres, but this time in an anti-clockwise direction overall. So here are four examples. In each case, I would like you to find the size of each moment produced by each force about the pivot point marked X. Identify the direction of each moment as well as the magnitude of each moment, and then decide what the overall effect of the moments is. The answers will come up in a few seconds, so make sure you pause the video and have a go at this first of all. So, question one first of all, let's have a look at the two Newton metre force. Remember, in each case, the pivot is the point marked X, where the black triangle is. So, the two Newton force has a moment of two Newton metres about X, and it is an anti-clockwise moment. The 3 Newton force has a moment of 3 times 4, which is 12 Newton metres, and it's also anti-clockwise, like that. So both forces produce an anti-clockwise moment, which means there is a total anti-clockwise moment of 14 Newton metres overall. Now, what about scenario 2? Taking moments about x, the 2 Newton force has a moment of 10 Newton metres, and about x, that is a clockwise moment. The 4 Newton force has a moment of 4 Newton metres, and that's in an anti-clockwise direction, about x. Now, this means that overall, there is a moment of 6 Newton metres in a clockwise direction. Scenario 3, this time we have three forces acting. So, the 2 Newton force on the left has a moment of 4 Newton metres clockwise. The 3 Newton force has a moment of 3 Newton metres anti-clockwise, and the 1 Newton force has a moment of 3 Newton metres also anti-clockwise. Remember, it's force, which is 1, multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot, which is 3 metres overall. So that means in the anti-clockwise direction, we have 6 Newton metres overall, if we combine this and this, in the clockwise direction, we only have 4 Newton metres, so that means overall there is a moment of 2 Newton metres in the anticlockwise direction. Now, in the last question, there are four forces acting. Let's deal with each of these in turn, starting with the most left-hand side force. So the 1 Newton force on the left has a moment of 1 Newton metre, and this is an anticlockwise moment. The second 1 Newton force here has a moment of 1 newton meters but it's in a clockwise direction the 2 newton force has a moment of 4 newton meters so there's a distance here of 2 meters overall and it's in an anti-clockwise direction and the last 1 newton force furthest on the right has a moment of 3 newton meters again in an anti-clockwise direction so overall in total, we've got in an anticlockwise direction, if we add up all the anticlockwise moments, that's this, this, and this, that gives us 8 Newton meters anticlockwise. We only have 1 Newton meter 
in a clockwise direction. So overall, we have an anti-clockwise moment of 7 newton metres if we take all the moments into account.